Hello everyone, and welcome to another video tutorial for Lightarama S5. In today's video, we'll be talking about motion effect basics in the Lightarama sequencer. In order to create motion effects, you'll first need to create motion effect rows and make sure you have the pro license level of Lightarama. If you're not sure how to create those rows, be sure to check out our motion effect row tutorial video first. If a row in the sequencer is black, it is able to receive motion effect commands. If a row has white cross hatches over the black, that means that the prop currently does not have any motion effect rows and you will need to create them in order to sequence. To navigate to motion effect commands, select motion as your type in the lower toolbar. This will change your effect section to source. The source section tells the sequencer where to look for information about the motion effect you're trying to place. New will create a new motion effect in your selected area of cells. Having playback selected while using the create action means that whatever effect is currently in the preview window will also be applied to the next selection of cells you highlight. If you need to modify an effect you've already placed, select the playback source and double click on an effect to edit. Samples refers to the effect samples window on the right sidebar. You can choose from built-in Lightarama effects set to their default parameters, effects that have been previously used in the current sequence, or effects that you have saved as favorites. If the effect sample window is ever missing, go to Window and click View Effect Samples Window. Regardless of the source you use to place your effects, you will end up modifying your effects in the Motion Effects Generator. Start by selecting from one of the built-in effects using this dropdown. After you've chosen your effect, the next step is to choose your colors. You are able to view six colors at once per effect. Checkmark the boxes of the colors you want to use, or single-click on any square to change the color. You can change to another solid color, use a transition, or even choose transparent as an option. If you want to rearrange your color order, simply hold down your left mouse button and drag. If you'll frequently be using the same colors in multiple songs, you can manage your palette presets with this button. Every single effect has multiple parameters you can change to add creativity to your sequencing instead of just using the generic defaults. You can set the parameter to a specific value for the entire length of the effect, or you can have it move between values over the duration. By default, all parameters are locked into one specific value. If you click on the lock dropdown for any effect, you'll see multiple options for how your effect can change over time. For example, we can set the bar width of this effect to 10 at the start and have it reach 50 by the end. You can click and drag the green and red sliders to adjust your start and end points. Use the center play button to see the applied change to your effect. If you decide you don't want the values to change over time, simply set the parameter back to the lock icon. If you want to reset every parameter you've changed in an effect back to the defaults, click this reset button. To save an effect to your favorites, click on the favorites folder and then click save. You have the option to name your effect, then it will appear over in your samples window on the right for use in future sequences. Once you're satisfied with your effect, click OK to apply it to the prop. And that's all for this tutorial. Don't forget to like and subscribe so that you never miss a notification about new videos.